I'm wearing my Nap Queen shirt. <laughs> yeah, I like this shirt. It, it's, I bought it specifically because it said Nap Queen on it. I, I did. I'm a napper and I, okay, I'll tell you where I got it. I got it at Dollar General. I love to go to Dollar General. Years ago, I came to North Carolina to visit my parents. My kids were little and my mom told me about the dollar store. And I was like, what's the dollar store? And the dollar store was this fabulous place because everything there was a dollar. And, and it could be books, it could be poster board, it could be candy, it could be party supplies, everything in there was a dollar. And I love that because there's no guesswork. And over time I have seen that dollar stores as a rule have a little fudge you know, on room on it in that it's not gonna be this is really five dollars we told you a dollar to get you in here no it's all a dollar the exception to that would be a candy bar that might be 89 cents okay it's still under a dollar there is also a store I will tell you I'm not sure how regional it is I know it's in North Carolina where I am but it is called five below and the logo, I think, was something that, you know, led me to believe something about coldness. Plus, I lived up north for, you know, 20 years and traveled to northern or other cold climates. So when I hear five below, my head immediately goes to, brr, it's cold. And I figured five below was a store that sold ski wear and things to navigate the cold and if you were going you know somewhere where that climate was such that you need to take really good care of yourself this is the store for you only later did i learn understand realize what have you that five below all the things that were in the store were five dollars or below or less and i thought i have missed out because you can find some of the absolute coolest things there, like um, phone covers, earbuds, tripods for your selfies, um, and, and you know different things like that. Shoes, you can find hats, you know, really cool things, um, all kinds of stuff that it's not gonna be any more than $5. Now, the only time it, they get me is if I go in and I'm, I forget that I'm in five below and I think I'm in the dollar store and I'm picking up cards, which can be a dollar or two for a dollar. Not there. Just realize that five below, it could be anywhere from two to three to four to five dollars. I don't pay that much for a card. Sorry to everyone I've ever sent a card to. I just don't. Um, I want to tell you though, but my Nap Queen shirt I got from Dollar General because Dollar General is a different kind of dollar store. It's a dollar-ish store in that there would be lots of things that are a dollar, but hey, all bets are off. We are also a store and we are making business. I like them, I do. Um, this, this is not just a shirt, it's actually pajamas. Um, so it's like a, a cool little, little top and very comfy pants. And it was $12, so see, eh, you know, whatever. But at Dollar General, what they do is periodically, occasionally, frequently, they will do this thing on Saturdays where your receipt that you get when you shop there will have at the very bottom, um, whenever it's going to be happening, it'll say $5 off of a $25 purchase. So you may not need $25 worth of stuff, which has happened to me. I have gone in there on a Saturday going, I'm going to save $5. But if you get up to $7, $8, $9, and you don't really need anything else, do not keep trying. Do not keep throwing stuff into your buggy so that you have $25 worth just so you can save the five. Really not not the best way to, to shop. So what I do is if I know I need things, I will wait until Saturday. You know, if I need stuff for, I'm going to my mom's and I need stuff to take to her or I'm going to a baby shower. So I will buy a card or some wrapping paper or, you know, little things to throw in with a gift or whatever. But when I saw this and it was $12, I wasn't inclined to buy it, but it made sense to buy it as part of my 25 because then I could get a whole bunch of other things that were a dollar and this and that. So I, I don't know. It, my mind goes kind of in wicked, weird, stupid directions, but it was kind of like, 
you take the five dollars off so it made sense to me but it's comfy and it it talks about well talks about yeah like my shirt has <laughs> some message my message is i am the nap queen i am a fan of napping i am a fan of sleeping it, if i had a bump a bumper sticker you know you see all these i'd rather be bungee jumping i'd rather be skiing i'd rather be you know saving the world i'd rather be napping on any given day and i have discovered that maybe you know this maybe you don't but let me enlighten you if you wake up in the morning and you are really tired even if you didn't your alarm didn't go off but you just woke up on your own but you still feel like gosh i didn't sleep well or i didn't sleep soundly or i wanted more sleep i always want to you know feel rested when you get up if you are not feeling like you're bounding out of bed and ready to, to tackle the day you're not going to feel more rested as the day goes on it's just not going to happen you're going to just continue to feel kind of sluggish and stuff that's just the way it is but i have always been a fan of a nap and there is no better day for a nap than sunday i used to think that was when i'd go to school or i was working or whatever and you know there was something nice about a sunday afternoon nap um, I have never been one to sleep in on a Sunday. It's just not my thing. Um, church is on Sunday. I mean, church is on other days as well. You can go to, to different functions at your church. But Sunday morning, for me, was church time. You know, I can sleep Sunday afternoon. I don't have to sleep in on Sunday morning. Besides which, you know, if I get enough um, amp amped up, I guess, I can appreciate a nap because I have gotten up early and been more productive it doesn't throw off my my rhythm during the week because one day I sleep in and suddenly then I can't can't rest the same the next day but I do like a Sunday afternoon nap what has happened over time older wiser is that I realize naps are good every day every day and even on my vacations sometimes I have woke up early in the morning and I'll take my walk, which I'd love to do early in the morning. That just kind of centers me. And, and uh, I don't know, I feel like I have more control or just just my approach to the day is better. I can, I can walk, I can clear my head, I can pray, I can just really get, you know, the sounds of nature and, you know, listen to a podcast or music or whatever, whatever I want to do. But it's kind of me time and I don't need anybody else in that space. You know, I'm not antisocial, although over time you'll probably hear me think, say things and you'll go, she's really antisocial. She can't stand anybody. And that's not the case. I just happen to like me time. <laughs> I think we all need that. Even on an airplane, they will tell you. If there is any change in pressure, if anything happens and the air mask comes down, uh, oxygen mask comes down, or if you need assistance, before you put it on your child, before you can help anybody else, you have to take care of yourself. And that's not to be selfish, that's just common sense. Because if I'm sitting there taking care of someone else and making sure they can breathe and all this other, and I can't, I'm out of there. And so I've helped nobody, myself or anybody else. So I don't think it's selfish. It is self-caring, okay? There's a difference in not just thinking of only yourself, but trying to get yourself as strong and viable and healthy as possible, then you're in a better space and capability of helping somebody else. It just makes sense. But um, I do like a nap. There are some people who think, um, no, you know, power nap, but not too long, I will take whatever I can get. There are times when I have taken a 20 minute nap and there are times when I have come in, uh, like a maybe it's a day off or I've had an especially stressful week and I will finish up and come home and I have been known to sleep maybe two hours. And that's huge. But what that tells me is I needed it. So anyway, nap queen aside, um, I do like to sleep. I don't like to waste my time but I feel like a good nap is always time well spent. Um, but we're supposed to take care of ourselves, right? The Bible instructs us to do that. God tells us, you know, our body is a temple. Take care of yourself. You know, if you don't, then you're not going to be functional. You're not going to be your best self. You know, it's not about how you look. It's not about the weight on the scale. It really is about being comfortable in your own skin. It is truly, truly the mindset that you either feel good or you feel less less than good um 
you know, you know when you look good in an outfit, you know when your hair is, is doing well. And rest is highly underrated sometimes. We just don't think about that. We just keep going. But we are not human goings. We're human beings. And I, I read a lot of different things. I read a devotional every day called, it's a book called Jesus Calling. You might have seen it. It's been, been very, very popular. I've given it as gifts because someone gave me one. And I'm amazed at how timely and how apropos on any given day and I've had it for several years and it might be February 13th and on this particular day I'm going through um, stress at work and something that it says will just seem to be the right thing and then a year or two will pass and it might be a, a different year and on that February 13th same message I'll read it and I'll be going through a health issue with me or someone in my family and I'll read it and go, oh my gosh, how did they know? And it's an amazing thing. It's like a chameleon. It just changes and yet the message is there. But you know what is also like that now that I think about it? The Bible. The Bible was written tens of hundreds of thousands of years ago. And I am amazed at how passages of scripture will speak to us just because we are reading it and maybe our receptivity is different, our mindset is different, our situation or circumstances are different, but yet we read it with a different eye. Um, I love the Bible in that it is a manual for us. It is a manual for how to live. It's a manual for how to treat people. It's a manual for parenting. It is a manual for how to be counseled by God instead of looking at everybody else and going, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Talk me off the ledge. And I understand the need to have someone with skin on. I get it. But instead of calling five friends to help you out of a jam who may have wonderful opinions or think everything you do is right or placate you because they don't want to hurt your feelings, pause. Talk to God. Talk to God. He created you. He probably knows the inner workings of you better than anyone. He knows your heart. He knows what he created you to do and to be. And that is an awesome thing. So since he made you, he might be the one to consult. But here's the thing. The Bible is also a great manual for your self-esteem because he made you. He didn't make junk. He didn't make you to fail. He didn't set you up to be a loser. He put you on this earth for a purpose. Now, I don't know what that is, and sometimes we can spend our whole lifetime looking for what that is, but what I do know is that God is faithful, He is consistent, He keeps His promise, and He will not leave or forsake us. We might move, and we might say, oh, I'm not as close to God as I used to. Who moved? Chances are it was us. The Bible has so many answers and so many truths that still hold solid today. So I encourage you to get a translation that speaks to you. Don't get something that's still in the Greek or Hebrew, 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 <laughs> Hebrew translation. That's Greek to me or Hebrew, whichever the case may be. Get one that is in a translation that you understand because if it's not speaking your language, the message is still going to be the same. It's just in words and a translation that you can apply because that's what is going to make it work for you. Check it out because I guarantee you God made you for a purpose and a reason. And don't just take up space. Use your time. Use your life. Make it count. Make it matter because if not, you're sleepwalking. And maybe you could be the nap queen. Yay. But... No, you want to use your time every waking hour to be useful and to be productive and to be happy. And we can. Check it out. See ya.